Greetings and welcome to another worship experience here at Chapel Memorial African Methodist Episcopal Church. I am the Reverend Lester J. Drayton Jr., pastor of this very fine church, and we welcome you uh, and thank you for joining us for this worship experience. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Will you join with me as we pray this morning? Father in heaven, we come before you first and foremost to thank you, God, for your blessings and your heavenly benediction being with us all throughout the past week. And you allowed us to gather together one more time. We ask, Lord, that you, O oh God, would engage us in this moment of worship. Take the space that we're in, sanctify it and hallow it, make it equal to that of this holy sanctuary so that we, O oh God, would be exposed to your glory and to your power and to your greatness, O oh God. Lord, we worship you this morning and we give you praise because truly there is none like you throughout all the earth. And God, we just want to say thank you, O oh God, for the privilege of worship and allowing us, O oh God, to be with you. Rain down upon us, O oh God. Speak to our hearts. Invoke your presence, O oh God. We invite you into our midst. In other words, God, have your way. Have your way, Lord, as we seek to worship you and praise you and bless you. And God, we will not cease to give your name the glory, honor, and praise, O oh God, for which you richly deserve. These and all of the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Want to uh, let you know that we are 23 days away from elections. And this is what I'm going to challenge you to do. I need you to learn Maybe you've not done this before, but I'm going to challenge you to learn to do this. Vote and pray at the same time. That's right. Vote and pray at the same time. There's so many things that are happening. So much is counted upon this election. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 11, it says, Put on the whole armor of God that you would be able to uh, stand against the wiles of the devil because we are not wrestling with flesh and blood but against angels and principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness in this age, and spiritual wickedness in high places. In other words, this vote is not just a physical contest between candidates in, in a given race, but there is a spiritual impetus that is uh, based in this. This fight is part spiritual. That's why I need you to vote and pray at the same time, because the enemy is working in this election already. We've already seen, seen evidence of voter suppression um, and things that are being done to try to thwart the results of the election. But if we pray, the Bible says if, uh, if we, being the people of God, God is speaking, he says, if my people will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, he said, I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin and heal their land. So we need to vote, yes, but we also need to pray. So I'm challenging you to learn how to vote and pray at the same time. And with prayer, I'm going to invite you to our prayer list. And I'm going to ask that you would pray for all those persons that are on that list that are seeking prayer. Those persons who are going through struggles and difficulties. Some of it is based on the global pandemic. Some is for losses that they've incurred, whether on their jobs or even in their lives and as far as family members. There's a lot that's happening to a different lot, for a lot of different people. And because uh, we can pray for them, we believe that God can come through and be the aid that they need. So we want you to pray for those persons that are on our prayer list, but also those persons uh, that have passed you along the way and asked you to say a prayer for them, as well as the more, more than 210,000 Americans that have died as a result of this uh, pandemic among so many others. This is, a, this is a time of suffering, but it's also a time of opportunity where, where as we pray, we can mobilize spiritually and get the upper hand on the enemy. So please pray for one another. Now, enjoy these announcements. Good day, everyone. My name is Jasmine Drayton, and these are your announcements for the week. Election season is now upon us. People are going to the polls to vote, and we encourage you to do the same. The state of South Carolina is in a state of emergency due to the impact of the global pandemic, and for that reason, you can vote early through the absentee process. 
To vote in-person absentee, you can visit the County Voter Registration Office in your County of Residence, complete an application, list State of Emergency as the reason for voting absentee, and cast your ballot. In Richland County, there are some additional early voting sites available. Go to our Connect page at fivepointschurch.churchtrack.com and click Early Voting Calendar for a list of available sites and hours of operation. For your convenience, you can view a sample of the ballot by clicking View a Sample Ballot on our Connect page. Enter your name and address to see the ballot containing every office you will be voting on. If you are voting absentee by mail, you will have needed to request an absentee application already, as it is now too late to do so. Complete, sign, and return your application as soon as possible. Then, you will receive an absentee ballot in the mail. Follow the instructions to complete your ballot and return it to the Voter Registration Office in your county of residence before November 1, 2020. Election Day is Tuesday, November 3rd. Exercise your right to vote. Every vote matters. Every vote counts. The Columbia District Lay Organization has secured Lay Vote lapel pins, which are now available for purchase. These pins are a way to remind us to vote, not only in the presidential election, but all elections. The cost of each pen is $10. Contact Sister Yvette Vant, our Lay Organization President, at 803-781-781. 6128 to have your pins delivered to you. We thank you in advance for purchasing a lapel voting pin in support of our church. Here are this week's schedule of events. Join us at 11:30 this morning for Church for Kids, our church service designed especially for kids ages 2 to 12. We invite you all to join us for Church for Kids on Zoom. I will give you the information on how to connect shortly. We will hold the intercessory prayer conference call on Tuesday evening at 9 p.m. and we invite you to join us. The conference call number is 515-604-9024, and the access code is 120111. Remember, prayer is the foundation for all victory. Are you an overcomer? Then we invite you to join the overcomers this Wednesday at 6 p.m. for the Overcomers Bible Study on Zoom. The notes for this week are now available at our Connect page at fivepointschurch.churchtrack.com. There will be a second church conference scheduled Monday, October 19th at 6 p.m. This is the conclusion of the annual meeting where the work of the ministry for this conference year is planned. We still have one remaining trustee position to fill, and in order to conduct the election, a link to the ballot was sent to confirm email addresses that are in our system. The purpose for this is to confirm that you are a full member of Chappell Memorial. If you do not have an email address, but would still like to vote in the elections, a physical ballot can be given to you based on the arrangements to do so. All ballots must be turned in next Sunday, October 18th at 5 p.m. A sealed ballot box is placed at the church for you to vote. If you have any questions about the election process, please contact Pastor Drayton as soon as possible. This meeting will be held using Zoom. Have you taken time to visit our Connect page lately? It's the most effective way to stay informed with all things related to our church on the local level, on the Episcopal level, and even on the connectional level. It's the one place to go to get everything you need, from submitting your prayer requests to listening to sermons online to getting information about voting. Log on to fivepointschurch.churchtrack.com today. Get informed, get encouraged, get connected. Here's how to connect with us on Zoom. The web address is on your screen. Please be sure to write it down exactly how it appears and save it because it never changes. You may also click on the Zoom icon on our Connect page. If you don't have a device with the camera or you just want to be a phone participant, just call any of the phone numbers you see listed on the screen and enter the meeting ID, which is also on the screen. Once again, save this information as it never changes. Church for Kids, Overcomers Bible Study, as well as Church School will meet using Zoom. This is Jasmine Drayton, and these were your announcements for the week. Now it's time for us to worship God through our giving. We ask that you would prepare yourselves to be a blessing to the house of the Lord as we give unto him. On the screen, you see the various ways in which you can give to our ministry. If you want to mail your check or money order to us, please use the post office box address that you see on your screen. You can easily go to our website at chapelmemorial.org. Click on the Give Online button that you see on the corner of the screen here, and you can give to us that way. You can go to your Give a Fly app on your device and look for Chapel Memorial Amy Church and give your offering there. Or you could text your offering to us by texting it to 321 Two three four five zero zero five. Uh, either way you choose to be a blessing to us, we are grateful enough to receive that offering 
And um, we believe that God is going to do great things as he enables us to do more for his kingdom, even in times like these. And as you being a partner with us, you get to share in the blessings that God will pour out upon us. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for these gifts that we're about to receive. Let it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, for the spreading of the gospel, for the equipping of the saints. Let it become bread for the hungry, as well as shelter for the homeless. And Father, we will not fail, we will not neglect to give your name glory, honor, and praise, because it all belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for your faithful gift to us. As we prepare to share the word of the Lord on today, I invite you to turn with me to into the New Testament to the book of James, the epistle of James. Uh, I'm going to be preaching from a very familiar passage in that scripture, chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. So if you turn with me in your Bibles to James, chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, you will find these words recorded. And for your uh indulgence. I'm going to be reading this from the New King James Version of Scripture. And the word of the Lord declares, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete lacking nothing. In thinking of this passage of scripture, I think it's timely that we should uh, hear a word from this uh, scripture here, and we're asking God clearly to speak to our hearts regarding it. I had a member of mine uh, say something to me that was encouraging. She just passed on a thought to me. And through the process of me working on this word for today, that thought worked its way into the title of the message. So I'm going to share it with you. The title of this message is, I'm growing through what I'm going through. I'm growing through what I'm going through. Join me as we pray this morning. Father in heaven, we do give thanks to you. We praise you, we love you, and we adore you. But Lord, we ask that you would convene with us in this moment of preaching. I humbly ask, O oh God, that you would give me clarity of thought and articulation of speech that I may be able to rightly divide this word today. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I would tell you, if, if the house was full, I would tell you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, I'm growing through what I'm going through. Amen. Um, the trials of life are those unavoidable interruptions to what we call our normal life. They seemingly come out of outward hardships, and sometimes they come from inward temptations. Not every believer, not every Christian, automatically knows, and based on them being a Christian, know how to respond posit positively through the trials of life. When I call them unavoidable interruptions, things that are not scheduled, things that have not been planned, things that we did not see coming. Nevertheless, they happen to us and they have the impact on our lives. And depending on the degree of uh, the interruption will cause us to search for what's going to be new about this. How can we get back to the way things used to be? What am I going to lose as a result of this interruption? And even more interestingly, where did this interruption come from? Now, I did mention that it comes either from outward hardships, like, for example, this global pandemic. Not a single one of us who've been impacted by it have done anything to cause this to come upon us. 
Um, although we do have the, the guidelines that we got to follow in terms of social distancing, in terms of uh, wearing a mask, especially when we're out in public places and we're limiting the places that we go because we want to slow the spread of this disease. But when this disease first came to us, it came seemingly out of nowhere uh, in terms of its impact on us. But then we also have those trials that come from inward temptations those deep-seated things that we tend not to pay attention to that leads us into dark alleyways and dark paths in terms of the things that we do and say that brings about uh, the trials that we find ourselves in. The thing is, it's not necessarily the trial that you go through. The question is, is how will you or how do you respond to the trials in your life? The question also is asked, do they make you bitter or do they make you better? There's a difference. There's a very big difference between the two. And it all uh, happens to be focused upon how you look at what you're going through. And, 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 and when we look at James and what James is putting together here for our, our consideration, first and foremost, we know that James is uh, considered to be the half-brother of Jesus. And and uh, he's writing to this uh, to believers based on what he writes in verse number one, that he's writing to the 12 tribes that are scattered everywhere. Talking about a group of people that used to be connected uh, locally and geographically, but because of trials, because of persecution, and you have various types of persecution. You have economical persecution. You have political persecution. You have religious persecution. As a result of the persecution, the people are like scattered. It's like a glass that you hold in your hand and then when you let it go and it drops to the ground and it breaks and the glass shatters everywhere, the people are scattered everywhere as a result of the trouble that has fallen upon them. Now, when we consider the people that James is writing to, they were a people uh, in religious, political, as well as economic turn down, uh, tur turmoil as a result of the persecution that they were suffering. When I mention economical, I'm talking about the fact that they were impoverished by being heavily taxed by Caesar and, 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 and at the same time going through a famine. Um, when you combine those things together economically, uh, such as the things that we take for granted now uh, become scarce. You know how you felt uh, when, when the pandemic first hit and you started to run to the stores and you're having a hard time finding toilet paper. Some of us are still trying to, still trying to find toilet paper. That's an example of the economic uh, price that is paid. Then you have the political uh, persecution because they lived under foreign rule because with Rome occupying Jewish territory, uh, it, it creates what is called the hostile environment. So as a result of political persecution, they're living in a hostile environment. So, so you got economic persecution, you got political persecution, and then you add to it religious persecution because they had opposition from the Sadducees, from the Pharisees, and, 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 they, and they had to deal with a very vengeful high priest who not too long ago uh, had ordered the execution of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And you got all these uh, things that are going on. Suddenly the people are now in hiding, looking for hope, don't know where to go, don't know where to turn, and, and, and just wondering how things are getting better. Just when they thought that Jesus Christ had come to save them, now they're facing all of this severe persecution but James, who is one among them, one who also is going through, seeks to be the encourager in this text when he writes this letter to them and tells them to count it all joy uh, because of the various trials that they're going through. And he says, knowing this, that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect works so that you may be whole and complete perfect and complete, not lacking anything. In other words, James is telling you, I know that you are going through, but God has allowed these things so that you can grow through them. Uh, the, the thing is, is that persecution in and of itself uh, 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 seems harsh. It seems uh, punishing, uh, punishing and gruesome. It seems grueling and taxing, and, and it causes you to be spread out everywhere. But you see, God has a growth plan for you in mind. 
mind and you can't grow while you're living in closed in spaces. Sometimes you got to learn how to stretch out and spread your wings because God is putting you through a process where the persecution, although you think it's there to make you bitter, God says, I'm putting you through a growth process that will ultimately make you better. And if you understood it from my perspective, you're not just going through, you're growing through. Look at somebody and say, I'm growing through what I'm going through. I'm growing through what I'm going through. A couple of things I need to share with you as we look at this text. I, I, I love this uh, the scripture. And when I study James, who is the author of the text, the Lord is using him to write this to us. And it's still speaking even in our day and in our time. And especially to me and in this moment, James knew firsthand of the pressures that they were facing because he was dealing with them himself. But yet. He, he is the Solomon of the New Testament. Uh, Solomon, who writes Proverbs from the Old Testament, he's writing New Testament Proverbs with his book. And basically, he is giving the church practical instruction in right Christian behavior. And at the same time, he wants, he seeks to expose hypocritical practices. But for this text and for our consideration, we have James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. And in, and in it, he is telling us that we should rejoice while going through these trials because of the benefit that these trials bring to us. And the first benefit is that God is burning out the worst in you or burning out the worst in me. Either way you want to get God is burning out the worst in us. When we consider this particular point, uh, uh, he, when, when we're told that we should uh, consider it a joy that we're going through these trials, he says, knowing this, that the testing of your faith, and that's the thing I want to pull out, because the one thing that I will tell you, that uh, whenever we experience hard times and trials, uh, well, one of the things that we're introduced to immediately is fear. Fear comes on to us, and basically uh, when fear works on us, it produces something called anxiety. And some, some of you know what I'm talking about because you're living uh, and dealing with fear and anxiety and its, in, on its impact on your life right now. And, and I want you to know that just because you are saved and just because you go to church and just because you believe in God doesn't mean that you messed up simply because you're dealing with fear. And fear has produced anxiety. But see, that's not the end of the journey. If you follow fear and let fear produce anxiety, ultimately, when it's all complete, it will bring you to utter chaos. And, and sometimes when you look at our circumstances, it, doesn't, it looks to be chaotic. When you look at the fact that uh, you got uh, uh, so much going on in this country, that we never thought would happen. We never thought that we would have a leader that would advocate violence instead of being one who would speak against it. You never thought that we would have a, a, a climate where people would champion a, a, a person, almost like how it was in the Old Testament when, when they lifted up the golden calf. Y'all remember that? If you read that in your Old Testament lesson, they lifted up the golden calf and gave the golden calf credit for their salvation when God got angry with them because simply the fact is that People are always lifting up an idol that represents the things that they stand for. And, the, and, and you can't stand for evil and stand for good at the same time. You can't drink both bitter and sweet water out the same cistern. And sometimes we, we try, we find ourselves doing that. But ultimately, it comes from a deep seated place in us called fear. Fear then produces anxiety. Anxiety brings us to chaos at completion hour. But here is the antidote to it. And when I say God is burning out the worst in us, what I'm saying is that instead of depending on our fear, God is trying to let, let us understand that we need to learn how to depend on him for he is uh, testing our faith. The antidote to fear 
is faith. Either you're going to walk in fear or you're going to walk in faith. If you're going to walk in faith, then your faith is being tested by the situation you're going through. I wish you could, I wish you could understand the simple fact is that whenever your faith is being tested, God has basically spent time with you already, giving you instruction, giving you a lesson. Just like the teacher in the classroom, when she tells you to break out the textbook and she goes over the different situations, scenarios represented in the lesson. You raise your hand and say, teacher, I have a question. She says, what is your question? And, and you ask your question and the teacher will answer your question, not just for your benefit, but for the benefit of everybody in the room. And, and every now and then the teacher will write on the board, these are the things that you need to know. And if you're a good student, you will write notes. But then comes testing time where you got to close the book, put everything away, pull out a sheet of paper and a pencil. And now I'm going to ask you questions. You can't ask me any questions during this process because you are being tested. And whenever the teacher is testing you, the teacher is always silent when you're taking a test. I'm telling you that your faith is being tested because some of you out there is asking, Lord, where are you? How long will you allow me to suffer like this? How long will you allow me to be in pain like this? And God says, I can't talk right now because your faith is being tested. I'm trying to measure what you've learned during the time we've already spent together. I'm not doing this to punish you. I'm actually doing this to promote you. But if you, if you understand the process a promotion usually is born out of circumstances and problems. It's usually born out of a hard situation where somebody has to be suffering and they're looking for a solution. And God will put the solution in you. And the only way God can get access to the solution, he has to promote you. But before God promotes you, he has to test you. Look at somebody and say, you under a test right now. You under a test. Now, understand this. When I say God is burning out the worst in you, uh, things that we tend to do, we tend to uh, uh, seek for uh, a sense of understanding of why we're going through what we're going through. If you remember that I said that sometimes uh, these situations come from outward circumstances, but they also come from inward temptation. Sometimes you've got a bad attitude. Sometimes you've got a filthy mouth. Sometimes you've got an unclean heart. Sometimes God got to stop you before you move any further and deal with the impurities in inside of you. Some of us want a religion where we don't have to change. We can be just anyhow. We can just do whatever we want to. We can just hurt whatever we want to. Say whatever we want to. But if you're going to follow the Lord, you're going to have to learn for God to let God deal with you. And some of you, you're on the altar right now. God is burning the worst out of you because you've given in to your fear. And God said, I can't let you go on living like this. You've given so much much into your fear to now you've developed a, 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 a diagnosis called anxiety and because you're living in constant anxiety you don't know how to trust lean or to depend on Jesus you're at a point now where you're, where you're struggling to, to, uh, to, to get a word from the Lord and because your anxiety now has dominion over you you're not going to hear what the Holy Ghost is saying because now you're, you're listening to this voice and listening to that voice but the Bible says my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow but what are you doing when you're hearing strange voices as soon as you hear it you speak it now you're talking crazy because you're talking nonsense I'm going to die like this I don't know how I'm going to make it I'm going to know how God's going to heal me I don't know whether or not God's going to come through you're talking crazy because your faith has been put on a back burner because fear stepped in and said come 
Come on, anxiety. We got to work on this, sister. Come on, anxiety. We got to work on this, brother. And faith is saying, I wish you would give me a chance. But if you ever allow God to burn the worst out of you, in the same time while God burns the worst out of you, listen to this point. He's going to bring out the best in you. When God decides, I can't let you go further. I got to put you on. The gurney. I got to put you on the stretcher. I got to do spiritual surgery because you got some unclean things in your heart. You got some dirty things in your mind. And they're all brought about to the fear and the anxiety that you're experiencing. And if you don't quit now, you're going to be headed toward chaos. But I got an antidote for you. I already told you that faith is the antidote to fear. If you bring your faith into the situation, your faith will say, uh, uh, come on, peace. Come on, patience. Come on, perseverance. Faith will tell you, I know it feels bad right now, but sooner or later, God's going to turn it around. God's going to make it work for your good. I'm here to tell somebody that God is bringing out the best in you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. And, and I just want to bring this out just a little bit more. See, the thing about it, God, he understands that if faith produces anxiety and it leads to chaos, God said, I got an antidote for each one of those. Faith produces patience. But the Bible says, let patience, <laughs> let patience have its perfect work. Because whenever that is complete, God said, I'm going to bring you into perfection. Because God says, you're going to be perfect and complete, not lacking anything. Now, I said fear, anxiety, chaos. That's what it's like when you live in fear, anxiety, chaos. You basically, you're growing down, but the same concept works on the other side. If you ever turn to your faith, it produces patience. And when it's complete, it produces perfection. Again, going down, just like a plant. When you take a seed, when you place it in the ground, what that seed does, it dies while it's in the ground. And it starts to bring uh, bear fruit downward, uh, uh, bring root downward, uh, while it prepares itself to bring fruit upward. Uh, the thing, the difference is uh, that in order for you to see the good stuff or above the ground, uh, God said, "I need for you to be planted. Uh, I need you to be rooted. Uh, I need you to be grounded in me." Uh, because the moment you understand uh, that you want to stand on your faith, uh, even though that you're going through right now. Uh, you don't have to go through for nothing. Look at somebody and say, I'm not just going through. I'm growing through because my faith is being developed. My faith is being tested. Sooner or later, when patients come in, I'm going to learn how to settle my spirit and wait for the Lord to act. Wait for the Lord to speak. You want me to tell you something about patients? The Bible says that the young man shall begin with and they shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint in other words I see what the circumstances have brought me but my faith is going to be planted on what the Lord said to me I don't care what the doctor said if it doesn't agree with what my faith is holding on to that I got every right to be to be cool and to keep my peace because faith produces patience but I got to let patience have his perfect work because in the end God's going to bring me into perfection and by the time by the time I come out of this I'm going to be looking so much better I'm going to be looking uh, so much wiser. I'm going to be so much smarter because I'm growing through what I'm going through. Is there anybody out there who's willing to give God a praise? I wish you'd throw your hands up and give God the best praise you got because you're growing through even though you're going through. Somebody shout yes. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. 
Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. I thank you. I give God praise. God, I give you glory. God, I worship you. Lord, I pray that everybody that's tuned in will get it locked in their spirit that you have not abandoned them. You're just being quiet because their faith is being tested. And if they realize that because their faith is being tested, that sooner or later is going to produce patience. When faith takes the center stage, it produces patience. That's why you don't freak out like everybody else. When everybody else is bugging out, you can still keep your cool because you're waiting on the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the beautiful thing about this, the beautiful thing about this is that in patience, you keep your soul. In patience, you keep, you possess your soul because you're not worried about the impact of the situation. It looked like it took you under, but actually you taking it under because God is allowing you to go through it because something catches you. You're about to look better than you've ever looked before. Mm. You don't have to look like what you've been through. That's why God said, I got to put you through a growth process huh? because when you grow in me, you gain strength that you never had. I will remember of this segment in the movie called Facing the Giants, which happens to be a Christian-based movie. And the coach, it was, uh, it was about a high school football team, and the coach was trying to work and uh, work with his players, and he had this one particular player that he felt was gifted, but yet he wanted to quit on himself. The coach said, come out here to the field. He came out there on the field. He said, now get down on your hands and knees. He called another player. He said, I want you to get on his back. And the player positioned himself on his back. Immediately, he felt the weight of that player. He said, I want you to crawl for 10 yards. I want you to crawl for 10 yards. I know you've got more weight than you normally have on you, but I want you to crawl 10 yards. He began to say, Coach, I don't think I can do it. He said, you need to get that out of your vocabulary. I just want you to move. I don't want to hear no excuses. Put one hand in front of the other and move. And he began to move. But he kept feeling the pain. He kept focusing on the weight. He kept dealing with the struggle. I can imagine his muscles were speaking to him and telling him, you're not going to be able to make the distance. You're not going to be able to hold on much longer. You need to tell the coach this is enough. I can't deal with no more. And he began to tell the coach and argue with the coach. But the coach wouldn't hear anything of it. He said, you keep pushing. You keep striving. You keep going. And then ultimately, when you get across the line, the player got up. The player got off his back. And he stood up. And he said, now look at how far you brought him. You just didn't do the 10 yards. You did the entire football field. In other words, you are stronger than what you ever realize and some of you out there you're stronger than you've ever realized if you just keep your mind fixing on Jesus Christ if you just allow faith to produce patience patience and faith will later bring you into perfection and the Bible says that you be perfect that you will com be complete and you will be entire not lacking anything if that's where you are right now I want you to shout I'm growing through what I'm going through I'm growing through what I'm going through somebody shout glory hallelujah hallelujah I gotta get out of here I gotta, I gotta get out of here as I <coughs> As I prepare to close this message, I want to speak to somebody out there. You don't have to let the circumstances dictate to you to the point that you become a prisoner of fear. The antidote to fear is faith. The antidote to anxiety is patience. The antidote to chaos is perfection. And the difference is, is how you look at it. Whatever God is doing in your life. Yes, he started out by burning out the worst in you. But ultimately, he's bringing out 
the best in you because he knows you will grow when you go. Or better yet, you will grow through when you go through. Pray with me. Father God, we thank you for this worship experience and we thank you for this word. This word that is encouraging me. This word that's telling me that all that I'm going through, I'm going through because I'm growing through. The situation does not dictate how it's going to impact me, but because you've ordered it to make me change, to make me grow, to strengthen my development, to get me stronger. I praise you for your wisdom. I praise you for your comfort too. I praise you for this process that I'm in because I'm growing through what I'm going through. And if there's anybody out there, God, who doesn't know you in the pardon of their sin, I pray, oh God, that you, Lord, would begin to minister to them and convince them that they need to give their lives to you. I pray, oh God, that they would get down on their knees and say, Lord, please save me. Save me from my sins. Make me the person you need me to be. And I'll serve you for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, Lord, we will not fail or neglect to give you praise. Amen. And just in case there's somebody out there who's not saved and you want to be saved, I challenge you, no, I dare you to write to us. Get in contact with us. Get, get Reach me anyway, whether or not if you want to put it in the fly feed, you can do that. If you, want to, if you want to send us a message privately or call our number, whatever, you do that. We'll reach back and we'll share the gospel with you. And we believe that God is going to impact your life for the better. I'm growing through what I'm going through. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. And all the praise and honor for him. Let us affirm our faith at this time. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he should come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, <clears throat> the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise from all creatures here below. Praise from above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Look at somebody and say, I'm growing through what I'm going through. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of his Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. God bless you, my beloved. We'll see you next week. <laughs>